Today we're going to go over the system, the GM Delco system that came in the uh, Chevrolets and GMCs for 88 to 94, most of the pickup trucks. Uh, this is one of the similar control heads. There are several different styles for this control head, but this usually sat up in the right side of the dash in front of the driver to the right of the steering column. And uh, this is called the control head. We've seen several problems with this entire system, and there are usually two. There are two pieces to this system, and as an upgrade, you could have a variety of a, a third piece to this system. The third piece would be the equalizer and cassette player, or uh, the CD player, over towards the center of the dash. Uh, this is hooked up in with the uh, CDM box. This is the control data module that sits under the dash. This is a three-piece system if you have the piece in the center of the dash, and two if you don't. Uh, we're going to go over some of the problems we commonly see with this. Uh, one of them is uh, static from the speakers, and because of the age of this vehicle, it's very likely that uh, the, the front dash speakers have most of static or poor sound quality or no sound quality at all. Uh, check the speakers in the dash first. These deteriorate all the time. The foam surround dis disintegrates and causes them to distort is one of the problems with distorted audio, but if the uh, stereo or the speakers have been taken care of, then we're most likely looking at the CDM being the problem here. The, the CDM is uh, the control data module, and this is the brains of the system. And the control head and the uh, add-on cassette or CD player hook up to this CDM box. Uh, what happens is all power from the car comes into the CDM box. We have an antenna jack that will plug into it and one connector that goes to the control head and a second down here that would go to the cassette or CD player. Uh, if you're having, let's say, a current draw in the car and the CD player continues to cycle or the cassette seems to click with the ignition off and so on, uh, you can come down to this box and remove this connector. This is the larger of the two connectors and this one usually sits closer to the front of the car. Uh, it sits in the car uh, this way, but we're going to show you how to get this out of the car here later in the video <clears throat> and show you the location and so on. So, with the current draw, you can disconnect the, if you have the center piece, you can disconnect that. Uh, if you're having a no power problem or the radio not turning on, nothing working, of course, we suggest checking the fuses first. There are two to this system. Uh, one of them is usually labeled radio, one is, or stereo. The other can be a variety of things. It could be courtesy, it could be backup. Uh, that's why we suggest checking all the fuses. Usually the one the cigarette lighter's on could be blown with something in it. But uh, check the power first. If the radio does not power up, again, this is going to be a CDM problem. <clears throat> if you happen to have poor reception in this vehicle, uh, the antenna does plug right into the top of the CDM box, but we've also seen another problem in this uh, vehicle, uh, especially if you have the metal antenna that is out on the front right fender. Uh, if you have that antenna there, I would suggest uh, opening the hood and tugging on the cable a little bit. Uh, the cable that attaches to see if it is uh, deteriorated from water or moisture from its connections, and sometimes we've been able to pull the antenna cable right out. Uh, the antenna cable is going to be like a black coaxial cable, and usually if you reach up into the side fender, there's openings where you can find the cable and, and, and follow it back. Also in line, uh, out under the hood, usually uh, uh, within a foot or two of the antenna, is a splice that is in line. And we've taken these splices and just touched them and they've deteriorated. Uh, it's best to take it apart to check to make sure the connections are clean and there's no water damage there as well. So these could all go to a, a poor reception problem, AM or FM. Uh, one thing you could always do is uh, drop the CDM down out of the uh, dash, uh, remove the antenna, plug a metal pick tool in. You can act as an antenna sometimes on this. Let's see, if we go here and we put the metal pick tool into the antenna slot, and as reception gets louder, we get better reception. This is another way of checking your reception if you're having poor audio problems. Uh, the cassette or the CD player, if you're having problems with either one of those, or the equalizer there as well, those are uh, uh, units we are no longer able to repair. <coughs> We've also seen uh, the clock, if you have the, the uh, option of the control head having the clock, this can have uh, be stuck at 1 o'clock or be stuck at a certain frequency or time, and it will not adjust. This is going to come back to being another CDM problem. Uh, this is uh, located... Uh, 
in the uh, dash above the uh, gas pedal. We have the original brackets on this CDM. There are three screws, one here at the front, one here coming up from the bottom at the front, and one at the back that goes this way. Uh, three seven millimeter bolts, and this drops right down. Again, if you have the current draw problem, please see our video. If you're having questions about what all the wires do going into this box, going either way, uh, there is usually a, a legend engraved on the uh, case of the unit, and it tells what all the connectors do. Uh, the only thing we've also had, we've gotten calls on uh, this one connector over here has four slots, but depending on the vehicle, you may only use three of these connectors. Now, these connectors are all keyed, so if you're removing any of these connectors from the bottom or the top, uh, you don't have to worry about writing down which order they came out because they're only going to go back and fit in one spot. I uh, hope this answers a lot of questions that you may have about this system. Uh, I believe this has answered pretty much most of what we've seen this system in the shop for. Uh, please hold on and uh, see how to remove the CDM. We're going to show that here next in the video. Thank you for watching. Here we are at the top of the dash. We have the uh, control head, which uh, also has a display. And over towards the center of the dash, the equalizer with cassette or CD player. And the CDM is located down under the dash. Here on the driver's side, we're going to go down underneath the panel that's below the steering column. There are two screws here where the yellow dots are. And we're going to remove this, both these screws. This will allow us to uh, remove this panel underneath the steering column. The blue tabs here at the top are little hooks, so when you remove the screws at the bottom, pull this panel down slightly and they will release and allow access to the uh, CDM box here. Now, uh, this is the th three screws I mentioned earlier in the video in regards to uh, where you would find them in the dash here. Uh, the two connectors at the bottom, the forward one here at the bottom, usually going to the equalizer, cassette and CD and or CD. And the uh, one towards the rear of the car going to the control box in the head. Uh, we can remove the three screws, uh, drop the CDM down, remove the antenna. The uh, connectors have little pinch fits or pinch the connector and it releases the lock and will allow you to remove the connector. Please see our website carstereohelp.com for a pair of these CDM boxes. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.